Good morning. It's great to have you with us this morning. Uh, Sunday, February 13th, Super Bowl Sunday already. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about the foundation of our faith. What makes our foundation and how can we tell if there's a problem with that foundation? Well, uh, before we do that, let's open with prayer. Father, we do thank you for this day, and we thank you that we can be together in this way. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would open up our hearts and our minds for what you have for us. Father, we continue to pray for those today who um, are suffering, Lord, with medical uh, conditions. We pray for those in the medical community, Lord, who... um, are tired and discouraged. Father, we continue to pray for those in our schools and our colleges. We pray for uh, the teaching staff, administrators, Lord, everyone who helps our kids get to school. And Father, we ask right now that your Holy Spirit would be poured out upon us Lord, uh, that you would illumine us and that you would give us your understanding. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, a seasoned and respected Lutheran pastor was asked to preach to a large group of clergy gathered at a seminary. And they were excited. You know, what wisdom and enlightenment would he bring to them? What encouragement would he leave with them? What fresh word would he would he bring to these ministers of the gospel? What instruction on the church in a new age? He told them that it was still all about Jesus. Um, the our reading from today will be from Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, and it's from Paul's letter to the Corinthian church, and they were having some problems in church, and not unlike our current culture, they were accommodating the culture of their time. In other words, they were allowing the culture to affect and change uh, the church. And Paul began um, that chapter saying, Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. Now, Paul, uh, so far throughout the first 14 chapters of 1 Corinthians has uh, spoken to the church about leadership. Some were following different leaders and it was causing conflict. Um, He reminded them that the only wisdom that they have is from God. He told them to flee sexual immorality and considering the issue of immorality, he kind of gave them a, a template for Christian marriage. He addressed abuses of the Lord's Supper. He discussed spiritual gifts and urged them to be unified, although they had different gifts. He reminded them that the greatest of the gifts is love. And he instructed them in the importance of order in worship. And then that brings us to the 15th chapter when he reminds them of the importance of the gospel. He returns to the basics of their faith. 1 Corinthians 15, beginning with verse 3. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. 
After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. Amid their problems, Paul brought them back to the foundation of their faith. It's still about Jesus. You know, in the church, Paul didn't expect to see an issue with belief in the resurrection. Outside uh, the church, among the pagans, maybe. And they might have had some areas in which they disagreed, but they that they should deny a truth that was so plainly discovered is surprising, especially when it's a truth of such importance. In response, Paul confirms them in this basic Christian truth, for without it, their faith could be destroyed. There was, uh, there's a daughter of a good friend of mine, and she's re recently gotten engaged, and she and her fiance were looking for a house. And they found a house that wasn't yet on the market, and the owner had done a lot of work. Um, the interior and the exterior had been painted. The kitchen was updated. And one of the selling points for them was the finished basement. But when they looked at it, they noticed that there were cracks in the foundation. Now, they were inexperienced with things like this. You know, they, they need to look at it more closely. How did they know if this was a problem or not? Well, apparently, they needed to look at other parts of the house. Was there a sagging roof? Were there cracks around the windows or the doors? Were there cracks in the walls or the ceilings? Was the foundation itself bowing or leaning? If any of those problems were evident, there could be problems with their foundation. Well, Paul saw cracks in the foundation of the faith of the Corinthian church. And after pointing out the waving of the roof, so to speak, and issues with their spiritual walls and ceilings, he points out these cracks in the very foundation of their faith. And in addressing this, he asks, but if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection from the dead. And this concerns Paul. It's not an easy time to be a believer in Jesus Christ. They experienced some persecution and had suffered for their faith. And if they didn't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then their faith could also be in jeopardy. He points out some problems uh, as the resurrection was the principal evidence of Christianity. You know, that's what makes us different. We serve a living Savior. Verse 14 says, And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is our faith. You know, without the resurrection, there's no point in preaching. There's no point in our faith. Verse 15 says, more than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. If there's no resurrection, then Paul was a liar. The resurrection points to the life of Christ. And without, the, without that, there's no hope for the resurrection of the dead. Verses 16 and 17. For if the dead are not raised 
then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You're still in your sins. We know that there's no remission of sins except through the shedding of blood, of Christ's blood. But if Christ's blood was shed and he died, but he was never restored, what evidence could we have that through him we have justification or salvation and eternal life? Had he remained under the power of death, how could he have delivered us from its power? And how useless is faith in him upon this supposition? He must rise for our justification. There had been no salvation if Christ had not risen. And isn't our faith in Christ in vain and of no significance if he's still among the dead? Verse 18 tells us, then those who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If there's no resurrection, those who went before us dying in their faith are lost. They are not rejoicing with Christ, but rather dead in the grave. Verse 19, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. If there's no resurrection and we only have hope in this life, we're a sad lot. It's God's presence with us that sometimes makes life bearable, that makes us able to get out of bed. But as we talk of if of his everlasting love, it would be a lie. Without the resurrection, as we make sacrifices to live for others, we would be fools. Without the resurrection, as we work out our, out our salvation, striving to be more like Christ, we would be missing the boat. Without a resurrection, if we're dead to this world, aliens here, and there's no hope of a world to come, it would be sad indeed. But in verse 20, Paul says, But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. Finally, Paul points out plainly that Christ has been raised from the dead, and because he's been raised from the dead, so those who are true believers will also be raised from the dead. That's the foundation of our faith. So what does this mean for us? Well, have you noticed problems in your spiritual houses? Are there inconsistencies in your faith? Is your faith on some days and off others? Then you need to go back to the basics of your faith. Are you convinced that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us? Is the Bible God's truth to you, his instruction? Is prayer a vital part of your life? Make sure that your foundation is solid. Let's pray. Father, as we come to you today, Lord, we are thankful for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Lord, we're thankful that he conquered sin and death on our behalf. And Father, we ask that you would help us to look to you. Lord, uh, to look to your word. Lord, to check the foundation of our faith. Father, we ask that you would continue to mold us to look more like Jesus. And we pray in his name. Amen.
So then brothers and sisters stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. Amen.